All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Nanny ball python. Essentially what the Nanny is, it's a pattern mutation in ball pythons. It's actually a co-dominant morph. You breed it to something else, half the offspring come out as Nanny. And essentially what it does is it takes like the alien head pattern on the side of the snake and it like blows the top off and it almost gives it like a curled antler type of appearance as far as changing the pattern. It also kind of gives it like a granulation or like a pixelation as far as kind of the patterns on the sides of the the snake which is kind of interesting and the other thing that is I find kind of interesting about Nanny is that I actually went over to the genetic calculator on the world of ball pythons tried to breed two nannies together in the genetic calculator and it didn't show that there's a super nanny indicating that there's something wrong with the super that it's actually a dominant morph and I actually found a picture of a super nanny over on morph market it's kind of interesting it's, some of these genes you know a lot of people will say you know this, this gene's been out for 10 years. It's not really that new. But let me tell you, if you come out with a new gene, it takes a few years to actually prove that it's genetic. And then it takes a few more years to actually grow up the females year after year and then really prove out to see what the genetics can really do and mix with other combos. So I'd say if, if a gene, as a matter of fact, the nanny's about nine years old, I think that is pretty much a new gene in ball pythons because anything that's over like nine or 10 years, it's pretty well established and pretty much the first nine ten years essentially what you're doing is you're proving that it's genetic figuring out if it's recessive or dominant or co-dominant and then you're really mixing it with a lot of other combos to really see the potential of the gene before people actually <laughs> kind of buy into it and accept that there's actually a lot of genes over on morph market that are pretty new on the market less than 10 years old and I'm like all right I want to know for sure if this is dominant or co-dominant and I want to see some of the combos. I want to know if this is really impressive, worth spending sometimes thousands of dollars to invest in the project. And the nanny's kind of interesting. As a matter of fact, I, I see prices all over the place. Sometimes I can see nannies for a few hundred bucks, and sometimes it's several thousand dollars for a simple nanny combination. And it seems like lately, in the last few years, it's really becoming more and more popular. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to the internet, and I wanna show you the potential of the nanny ball python. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here at morphmarket.com and I wanna start with a normal wild type ball python. As a matter of fact, if you're walking around West Africa and you found a ball python in the wild, this is what it would look like. And if you actually look at the pattern on the side, especially this top little pattern right here, this is what we call an alien head, kind of like the Roswell gray aliens with the two little eyes. And I'd say most normal ball pythons actually have the alien head. Some of them don't, some, some can be kind of variable. And if you actually look at the other patterns on the side they're kind of solid with no other really you know pixelation or anything in the sides of the pattern if you actually compare that to a nanny take a look at this this is a nanny and there's a few things you can actually pick out on the nanny ball python the first thing you can notice is that the alien heads on the sides a lot of times they're really pixelated and have a lot of these little dark spots all through the pattern sometimes they're not completely symmetrical although it does have one little alien head here but I'd say most of the times it's actually kind of granulated and mixed up the other kind of an interesting characteristic with the nanny I'd say maybe in 50% of the cases you actually get this little stripe right down the back of the neck that almost has little bubbles in it in some cases in this case it almost looks like it has like a black stripe inside of the yellow stripe but I'd say in most cases it actually has little kind of little bubbles through there and it, it only seems like it, it actually kind of appears about 50% of the time it's not always there but you can definitely tell it's nanny from the pixelation in the patterns on the sides and I want to also show you the super nanny take a look at this I found this picture then this is the super nanny pretty awesome you can see on this one a lot of pixelation in the side really breaks up the pattern and really reduces it almost into almost like tiger stripes it's kind of interesting and this line right down the top you can almost see the little bubbles 
kind of in the line all the way down. And it's kind of interesting when I see a new morph, kind of the first thing that I want to see, I want to see what the super looks like. Because even if the base morph is not that impressive, you can almost use the super kind of like almost a recessive morph. We can actually have two copies of the gene, work other things into it, and make the super with other genes on top of it. Sometimes that is the ultimate potential of a codominant morph. As a matter of fact, this one actually has fire in the mix. And I can actually find Super Nanny without the fire. This is the only Super Nanny picture that I could find over here on Morph Market. It looks like it has a lot of potential. So I kind of want to change gears. I wanted to just kind of start with some of the more common ball python morphs that we use a lot in the ball python industry and add Nanny to the mix so you can really see the potential of what Nanny does when you mix it in with some of these other genes. And I wanted to start with the black pastel. The black pastel is actually a dark morph. If you actually make the super, it's pretty awesome. It's actually almost a jet black snake and completely patternless, a really awesome snake. And if you actually take a look at the kind of the pattern on the side it almost has these keyholes almost looks like you could take a skeleton key and put it in a lock you know, that's a, kind of what we call the keyhole sometimes they have like almost floating keyholes as some people would call them and if you actually work nanny into black pastel take a look at this you get a crazy pattern on the sides of the thing and this is kind of it's kind of interesting sometimes it almost like blows the top of the alien heads off and then kind of curls them inwards which is a really Really unique characteristic almost like antlers on a deer which is kind of interesting and it, it seems like you know in some cases it sometimes you actually see an alien head here and there but I'd say in most cases it actually really disrupts the pattern inside the alien heads and sometimes just blows the top off and kind of curls them back around and if you actually take a look at really look at this close really close on the snake you can actually see that the nanny is changing the appearance of the size of the snakes without really changing the color which is a really good advantage for some genes sometimes you just want to change the, the the patterns on the sides of the snake and you want to keep the original color of the snake sometimes especially if you're working like a really bright gene like if you're mixing like fire and orange dream and pastel and some of those really super bright genes you can actually add genes that'll disrupt the pattern like ghi but ghi is a really dark morph and it would really detract from the brightness that you're going after but in this case, you could actually go over, you know, you can work with the dark morphs or the light morphs and work the nanny into it, disrupt the pattern. And from what I'm seeing, you really wouldn't change the color of the snake. So this is the banana ball python. The banana has been out for quite a long time. It's a really visually dominant morph. You breed a banana to something else, half the offspring come out as bananas. And if you breed two bananas together, you get a super that looks almost like a banana. And if you actually take a really close look at the banana, this actually has pretty regular repeating patterns. Sometimes you can actually see like little alien heads on the sides of the banana with the two little eyes kind of sticking out here. This is what happens when you add nanny in with the banana and take a look at this it completely jumbles up all the pattern inside of those little alien heads you can definitely see that the nanny is in there as a matter of fact if you look at the stripe right behind the head you can actually see it in this example where it kind of has these little bubbles right in the stripe right behind the head it's kind of interesting on this one you actually see maybe a little bit of lightning in the background I'd say this is kind of an unusual example pretty much everything I've looked at it does doesn't really seem to lighten or darken the background. So here is the banana with the cinnamon. If you want to go towards the dark side, it's a really awesome combo. If you actually take a look at this, the cinnamon's a dark morph and it takes the banana and darkens the background of the snake. And you still see kind of the alien heads maybe reduced to little keyholes. And this is what happens when you add Nanny to the banana cinnamon. Take a look at this snake. This is one of the most impressive Nanny combos that I've seen over here. And you can definitely tell there's a really huge effect. As a matter of fact, 
if you look right behind the neck on this one, you don't see the little bubbles. Sometimes you actually don't see the little, kind of the, the bubbly line right behind the neck. This is kind of an example. But you see, uh, the, it really kind of jumbles up the line right down the top. It really has an effect on the kind of the smoothness of the line coming down. And the kind of the, the patterns on the side, you can see some pixelation in there. And I'm thinking this is the, the combination between the Nanny and the Cinnamon. A lot of times when you mix Cinnamon in with other combos, a lot of times you'll get like streaking along the side from the cinnamon. In this case, it's actually working together. The nanny's kind of pixelating it and breaking it up, but the cinnamon's also seems like it's interacting with the nanny to really streak it out just a little bit. Makes for a really impressive combination. As a matter of fact, I was wondering what the price was on this one. <laughs> this one is $1,500, still for sale. That is a pretty amazing combo. So this is the GHI. So the GHI, I'd say, is another pattern. Kind of, it kind of scrambles up the pattern, but with the GHI, you're also getting a really dark morph. So you pretty much are stuck going to the dark side if you use GHI to jumble up the pattern. GHI is actually short for gotta have it. And you can definitely see in this one, it completely jumbles up the pattern. You don't really have the alien heads. Although if you kind of look at the tops, they're almost like completely sealed. Not really where, you know, like the top is blown blowing off of the pattern. But if you actually mix G, uh, a Nanny in with the GHI, take a look at what happens with this combo. You actually get kind of these alien heads that are, you know, the, with the tops kind of blown off of the top when you mix it in with the GHI. And you can definitely see right along the back of the neck, the little line with the bubbles in it. And sometimes, sometimes you can actually see that line go more down the back. Sometimes it really breaks up a line. And this time, you know, with the, with the GHI, it really kind of jumbles it up to where you don't really get that line down the back. But you can definitely see in this example, it really keeps the darkness from the GHI. It doesn't really change the brightness of the snake. Here is a Mojave ball python. The Mojave is kind of interesting. It's actually, as a matter of fact, if you make a Mojave GHI, you get a really jet black snake that's almost patternless except this really bright dotted line right down the top of the snake. It makes for a really awesome combo. The Mojave is actually in the blue-eyed leucistic. You breed two of them together, you get an all-white snake with blue eyes. And if you actually look in the side of this one, you get more of the keyhole or floating keyhole kind of patterns on the sides of the snake. And here's what happens when you mix nanny in with the Mojave. Take a look at this. This is pretty crazy. It really has a really strong effect with the Mojave. Completely wipes out all the alien heads and you kind of get these little groups of pixelated pattern all along the snake. And you can definitely see in this one that you know sometimes you'll see the little bubbles behind the neck but it's not always a sure sign that it's always in there. But you could definitely tell you know if you actually bred the nanny to the Mojave and you had a whole clutch of offspring you could definitely tell the difference between the Nanny Mojave and just the regular Mojave. It has a really strong influence when you mix it with Mojave. So here's the last one I wanted to show you. This is actually the Mojave with the pastel. So it's one of the really awesome combos because the pastel, in a lot of cases, it's really super bright combo with a lot of high contrast. And you still get these little keyholes on the sides from the Mojave. This is what happens when you mix Nanny in with a pastel Mojave. Take a look at this. This is really awesome. You actually get a little bit of darkening, but it's kind of from the uh, from the pastel Mojave mix you get you get this kind of a, an interesting colored snake really bright and contrasty between the darks and the yellows and essentially what the nanny's doing it's going in there and it's really breaking up the floating alien heads the keyhole patterns on the side and really giving it a lot of pixelation makes for a really interesting combination all right, so it is time for the question of the day and Tom Gregory asks how long have you had this amazing collection of snakes? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I started in snakes about five years ago. And let me tell you, I didn't have the setup that I have today when I first started. Essentially, I started with glass aquariums on wire shelving units. And I quickly transitioned over to these ARS racks. These ARS racks are pretty awesome, the racks behind me. And the cool thing about the racks is you can actually buy them just one or several levels at a time. So when I first started, I just bought 
bought four levels of an ARS 7030, which is the ideal size for adult ball pythons. And I kind of slowly built up over the years just a few levels at a time until I pretty much filled my whole room. I can't fit any more racks into this room. It took me probably maybe three or four years to actually get all these racks in here. The last racks I bought, I just bought last year, I bought two of my hatchling racks. I can actually hold up to over 100. I think it's 105 hatchlings that I can hold in these hatchling racks, which is pretty cool. And let me tell you, it takes a long time to get all the equipment and everything together and to actually build your collection. And it seems like the more you're in ball pythons, the more you can actually sell some offspring and invest in higher quality morphs, some of the more high-end stuff. And the more you actually sell some of that high-end stuff, the more you can reinvest in your collection and kind of grows at an exponential rate. But let me tell you, when you're first starting in ball pythons, it is kind of overwhelming because there's a lot of stuff that you actually have to buy. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.